Welcome back. Um, it's getting dark out now, but uh, I'm glad you could come along with me on this and uh, discover things uh, as I am. Uh, it's fun to bring you along on this. And um, I've uh, showed some things in the last two videos that uh, maybe I can start tying together in this video. And um, I... Uh, it's kind of a, a process of checking things out. And even the most complicated machine work or projects <clears throat> or doing work on the jig board machine, it's just a, a, a number of small steps. And a lot of them have to be in the correct order, of course, and stuff. But uh, even the most difficult project is just a series of small steps using the basic machinist skills. Now, I, sh I know a few things from way, way back and, and uh, some things from experience that uh, I can show you. And uh, maybe it'll help you in your endeavors, too. Now, I'm going to take the camera loose here. And uh, I might have to put it back, but I'm going to kind of show you a couple things here real quick. Kind of. Now, back to this gauge here. Now, you can use this, you see, using the slots and the pins to um, <clears throat> dial in your vise without running the table back and forth. Now these slots are true with the machine. You know, you can test them and stuff like that. And you gotta keep the edges of the slots clean, you know, to use a tool like that. But, uh, so, I'll get that dialed in a little bit later. And I'm gonna take this tool away now. I'll set it over here. Won't need that for a little while. Okay, now, when I had that collar chuck in there, um. I was able to get it truer at the end um, than I was uh, near the spindle taper. And I tried to get some light on this. The spindle taper does have a few issues. There was a, uh, a tool holder uh, rusted into it. And it looks at, like at one time, <clears throat> maybe somebody kind of spun it a little bit there. Kind of hard to turn. Maybe I could reach around and grab that flange and rotate it. And you can kind of see. Okay, <clears throat> excuse me. I've worked on that just a little bit so far. Now, one of the things uh, that's an indication that there's a problem also with that socket is you can take a tool holder like this in it. Uh, I just chose this one because uh, it's easy to hang on to. Uh, that's a 40 taper Ericsson 180 collet chuck. But it's nice to hang on to. Okay, I'm going to insert it in there, and I'm going to turn it. And it feels bumpy, and it doesn't lock in. You see it kind of jerk? Okay, now that's a, that's a bad surface, a bad bearing surface between the taper and the socket. So, okay, now at this point, I'm going to put you back on the tripod. Hang on, don't get dizzy, don't puke. It's a carnival ride, I know. Come on. Here we go, round up. Yeah, something like that, I think. Well, yeah, okay. Now, <clears throat> what I got here is uh, Prussian blue. And uh, some people are familiar with it, some people aren't, you know. And it's kind of an old-time stuff, and it wants to come out of the tube real fast. So I got just a little bit on my finger. And I'm going to put it on this chuck here, okay? I'm going to do a good line. But I don't want it too thick either. That's pretty goopy. But I guess I'm going to have to have it fairly thick for you to see. Let's see if I can get it on there. Kind of okay. Try not to scratch my nose, right? Okay. Now I'm going to stick that into that socket and turn it. I'll give it about a half a turn. And I'm going to try to get it out. Okay. So we have a contact band uh, <clears throat> more towards the middle, you know, 
But I think the actual taper stops right there, okay? But I don't like that kind of contact because uh, you see here uh, at the uh, at the opening uh, of the uh, <clears throat> taper here, it's not contacting. And that's an important uh, place to have full contact, okay? You see what's happened there? We'll try it again here. I'll smear that on there. It's getting a little thinner. It might be easier to see. I'm going to take this rag and get it out of there for right now. Okay. Now let's do it again. Okay, I'm going to stick it in. I give it about a quarter turn. See, it, 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 it should, you should push it in and it'll stick, but I can still rotate it and it's like jerky. Okay. Yeah, see, <clears throat> as it's getting thinner, you can kind of see more what's going on, you see. And it, this uh, has actually very little contact. It has less contact, I believe, than more, maybe 50%. I don't know. Maybe you guys can be the judge how much con um, contact is there. But it's not enough. Okay, so we got to fix that. And... <clears throat> Now, I can stick this in the tool and cutter grinder, this spindle. Remove the spindle and put it in there and rotate it with the motor or even by hand and grind it with that internal setup that I demonstrated earlier. And it'll do a fine job, okay? So I can re-grind that taper. And I actually did touch this up when I first started working on this because it was bad and it had uh, stains and rust and, so, and some uh, where it kind of peeled up. I'll try to rotate that again. Okay. Okay. So anyway, this is the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take a, a bearing scraper and this is what they look like. Okay, and uh, here's a smaller one right there, kind of a spoon-shaped thing, see? Let me get them, so, okay. Then I'm going to get that in there like this. This I have to sharpen it and just start working it. I can actually feel it catching burrs now. See what I'm going to do? I'm going to keep doing that. But I'll get this thing really, really sharp. Uh, maybe I'll show you what I use for sharpening because being able to sharpen anything and everything at any time is very important. So um, there's people out there with a lot of experience. You're just going to have to bear with me while I help the younger people. You know, anyway, the old people know everything, don't do a damn thing anyway, do they? <laughs> Except this old guy. This old guy's on the move. All right. Let's see what we got for time left on this camera here. Oh, about, yeah, I got a few minutes. A, a few minutes and uh, <clears throat> I'm going to... Uh, 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 do some measurements and stuff like that, but uh, I th uh, in the last video I was talking about a, a number two machine. It just uh, with this kind of arrangement, you just lose so much uh, uh, distance. But the number three machine has a lot more, a lot more room, but it takes a huge amount of room, and they're very heavy. So I don't know. Number two is all right. <laughs> But that's quite a gizmo, isn't it? But I think the problems here are minor. But uh, I need to adjust adjust the temp invariance in this. And uh, it, it's easy to, uh, uh, fairly easy to do that. It's easy to pull the quill out and uh, <clears throat> get it on the bench and uh, uh, just snug those bearings up just a tiny bit. And they've never been adjusted. Oh, and this is super important, folks. If you buy one of these heads, I want you to understand that the Timken variants in this head cost thousands of dollars now. 
And the way they manufacture these things, they put them together carefully and they grind the spindle with them in the bearings like I do on the cutter grinder. So if you remove the bearings for any reasons, you're going to have some problems, you know, if they're depending on, you know, uh, the conditions, you know, they could be severe and the, and the head will be unusable. It'll have to go to somebody that can rebuild it and that'll cost you an awful lot of money, you know. So <clears throat> what I did um, with this head here is, uh, here's the Zert here. I took this, I took the uh, baffles out and I pumped three tubes of grease through it and pushed all the old grease out of it. And luckily this thing sat just right in the, <clears throat> in the junkyard that it, uh, the water didn't destroy the bearings. Okay, I'm going to load this video and tomorrow's a new day and uh, thanks everybody and God bless you.